Hey love buzz and welcome back to my channel you love India. I'm India if you're new so go ahead and click the like, the comment, and the subscribe button while you're here. Also don't forget to turn on your post notification bell so that you are notified every single time I drop a video. Like this video, leave a comment in the comment section and you know we'll chat down there. So this is part two to my um, previous video of um, my first week of training and having to kick my trainee off my truck. So um, before I get into the details of what happened and stuff like that I'm gonna address a few things especially things that were left in the comment section um and some of the things I'll address it as I go hopefully I don't forget anything because I didn't write no notes or anything down but um first things first let's be respectful like I don't care about people agreeing or disagreeing or whatever assumptions that you guys may have left in the comment section because for one you guys didn't really get the whole story and for two people gonna say what they want to say behind the internet because of course it's the internet like <laughs> that's what people do um so i'm not really mad about you know comments or anything like that however we are definitely going to keep them respectful so if i felt like you were being disrespectful in any shape or form you were definitely blocked um if you can't keep it cute keep it mute so um that's that on that so um i'll also be addressing in this video whether or not I'll still be training or not. So if you guys were um, wondering, I'll definitely be addressing it towards the end of the video to answer your questions. So I'm just going to piggyback off some things that were left in the comment section. So I don't know what made people think that I was driving and she was asleep while I'm driving. Because I saw about three comments saying, oh, I thought she's supposed to be... Um, I know you're not supposed to be driving while she's asleep. I don't know if you guys think because you guys saw her bed made up. But at the company I work with, and even if it wasn't at the company, if I'm up, you up. If I got to drive and you're not driving, you're going to be in that passenger seat watching and soaking in, you know, whatever it is that I'm showing or I'm demonstrating. So we do not, we don't sleep separate times. When I'm up, she's up. When she's up, I'm up. So when she's driving, I'm in that passenger seat watching, observing, correcting, and things like that. I don't sleep while she's driving she don't sleep while I'm driving furthermore she definitely not sleeping up there on no top bunk while I'm driving um so when the truck is parked we're both sleep um we both run our clocks at the same time so there's not even no such thing as me driving while she's sleeping because I'm on duty while she's running so we're both running our clock at the same time so I don't know where people got you know that kind of mixed in or stuff but that's definitely not the case um what else i saw in the comment section um the situation in hand let's just talk about it. let's get into what happened so i've explained to you guys on this journey that i was definitely nervous i'm not even gonna lie i'm very i was very very nervous you know starting out and just accepting this position um so initially you know i thought about it and i was like you know i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it like i told you guys in the previous video i was not training was never something that i said oh my god i want to do it was nothing that i asked the company about or anything like that they reached out to me with the opportunity and you know you know let me know that they were in need of trainers especially for women um so like i said i felt bad of course the money was also a reason to train but knowing that it's a lot of females that's sitting at the terminal that need a trainer made me feel like, you know what, I might as well go ahead and, you know, try it out. Um, so my first trainee, she was um, in her 50s, uh, early 50s, and she was Puerto Rican. So the issue at hand um at least that i felt like was there was a communication barrier um there was a communication issue i don't think that she was understanding a lot of the things that i was saying or you know stuff that i was demonstrating and stuff like that and i wouldn't say it was my fault because that's not my fault if you're not understanding and i'm asking so i started driving first when we got on the truck you know, I introduced her to the truck. 
this is you know as you guys seen in the video um india um this is my truck i also let her know you know what kind of account what kind of accounts i'm on the way i run um everything about the account a little bit about me how long i've been driving um the things I've done in trucking as far as the type of jobs I've had. Touch freight, OTR, I ran refrigerated. Like, a nice little background about me and everything. Everything was fine. Um, we got along, you know, pretty fine. There was no issues. Uh, the first day that she did get on the truck, she did drive the first day. However, she did not drive the first few hours. I drove the first few hours. Um, but I couldn't allow her to drive all the way to deliver the, I mean, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't drive to deliver the first load, which is what I would normally, you know, do is drive all the way and deliver the load. But considering the time that we had, you know, for me being up there at the yard and her getting her things on the truck and me cleaning out the truck and getting, you know, everything ready, a lot of my time was gone from me getting up there and getting the truck and stuff. Um, so... I drove a few hours, you know, we talked, um, asked her questions, um, asked her, you know, how you feel about your back end, what do you feel your weaknesses are, um, uh, what do you feel your strengths are, so at least I know, I can test you off of what you're telling me, so if you're telling me that, you know, I have no problem staying in my lane, um, turns is not my problem, I'm gonna still watch that just to make sure that, okay you're doing good in it that you're right i'm going to confirm that those are not your problems and i'm going to confirm that your problems are your problems so if you're telling me that backing is your problem okay we're going to look at it. i'm going to see what it you know what exactly about backing is your problem um so uh first two days went okay she was backing without really no problems or nothing like that setup was not the issue so what i noticed is that her issue was, I noticed in, 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 in trucking school, when they are teaching the new students trucking, they are giving you guys all this room. You got all this space. You're not parking in between trailers. You know, you guys have cones out there um, and stuff like that. So you guys are not actually backing these trailers next to another trailer. And you guys are not backing into um, limited spaces. So... Her setup used to always be set up for a wide range of space. And I'm like, mommy, we cannot, you cannot swing out that wide because you're not going to have no, no, room, no swing room for your tractor when you start backing and you have to get back underneath your trailer. So uh, we both agreed on that. She definitely agreed. You know, I showed her what I meant about her coming out too wide, set up and stuff like that. And she was like, yes, there's no room, there's no room. She reset up. And, you know, we, we, we got it together. Um, so as she was backing and stuff, you know, I was telling her because she was, you know, trying to put the trailer in the hole. So as she's backing, her tires is constantly getting closer to the next trailer. So I'm like, mommy, do you see your tandems? Because if you see your tandems and your tandems are getting close to this other trailer, you have to stop. If I see that my tires is coming close onto another truck or it's getting close onto this other trailer, I'm too close. I need to pull up, readjust it, and push my trailer more over to the right side away from the other trailer or the other tractor, whichever, whatever I'm getting close to. So, um, it was times where she was backing and I'm like, stop, mommy, stop. Do you see your tandems? And she's like, yeah, I see the tandems. I see the tandems. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, do you know what the tandems is? She said, yes, I know what the tandem is. I said, okay. So every time she's back in, she's doing the same thing. So I say, mommy, you know, if you're back in and you see that it's still going towards the other trailer, why would you keep pushing the trailer in? You never force a trailer into a space. If it's not going... You need to reset up because that's not it. You you shouldn't have to force your trailer in, in no type of space. It should automatically go in. And if it's starting to pivot and it's going towards another truck, you need to pull up, readjust it, and back in again. So, um, after about two or three days, you know, her training on the truck and stuff like that, you know, I started noticing that I don't think she understand what I mean because, like I said, she's still 
pushing the tandems and trying to force this trailer into a hole. So, um, the next, the next, that's like the third day we was going to go to the truck stop to park. So when we went to the truck stop, you know, I told her pick up poison. You know, when you get there, it's we got there pretty early, so it's a lot of spaces, it's places to park. So I said, you know, pick your poison, pick, you know, pick where you want to park at. So the truck stop where you come in is like an L shape. So you come in the truck stop, and then as soon as you turn the L, it takes you around to the fuel owls. So you have the fuel owls in the front, but you have parking on the back end. So the fuel owls are up here, and then you got the parking that's back here. Um, so we pull up to the parking, and I'm like, Mommy, um, what we doing? What we parking? And she said, Okay, um, I'm gonna park here because everything over there. She was kind of scared to park next to the trailers, but this particular spot, they had a spot empty on the side of it, so she felt most comfortable parking there. I said, Okay, that's fine. That's where you want to park. So, in the midst of her um, getting ready to set up for her parking, mind you, I'm on the on the passenger seat, so I'm close to her parking. So she was like, "Oh my God, we have to blindside." So I'm like, "Mommy," I started telling her, "You know, hey, whenever you're parking, you make whatever you do, don't make nothing harder for yourself. You always want to." You want to look at your area. You want to, you know, see what it is that you get yourself into before you get into it. What I mean by that is this, the particular space that she wanted. If I see that I got plenty space in the front of me, and I got this whole fuel aisle area in front of me, it's no trucks, you know, backed up in the fuel aisle, the lanes are clear, why would I blindside when all you have to do is pull up like you're going into the fuel aisle, turn on your hazards lights, and do a straight back? So when I told her that, she was like, oh, yeah, 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 okay, makes sense. I'm like, yeah, and if you find a spot in a few out and you could push straight up in it, push straight up in it. Only back if you have to. Don't ever make, you know, things harder for yourself. If you get there and you get there early and you got that opportunity to pull right in a spot and, and you ain't got to back, baby, pull in the spot. We not backing. Why, you know, why put yourself through that? So she was like, okay, okay. So she's setting up for her scrape back. So as she's doing her scrape back, you know, she had this thing about me being out the truck and like telling her what to do. It was like, it was kind of like she was embarrassed to be in training or something like that. So she was like, no, no, you don't have to get out. I got it. I got it. I said, okay, mommy, you sure you know how to scrape back? She was like, yes. I'm like, okay, because scrape back and it's easy. Um, so she said, yeah, I got it. So I'm in the passenger seat. She's in the driver's seat. So while we're in the passenger seat, I'm noticing like your trailer is not going straight back. I can see your trailer again out of my view, which means your trailer is track is you know tracking over to the driver's side. So I said, stop, mommy. I said, are you sure the tra the truck is going straight back? Because I don't see no trailer going straight back from you know the mirrors. Me looking up into the mirrors. So she said, yes, yes, yes. So I said, you know, stop, pop the brakes, get out and look. You know, you want to make sure that that's what your trailer is going to the right spot. So she, she, I don't know, she had this thing about getting out and look that she used to get aggravated about how many times she got to get out and look. Which I'll, I'll answer clips to justify, you know, things and stuff like that. So she got out the truck. She didn't even get out. You know how you look out and you, you look out and, and you look at the trailer, the back of the trailer. And she's like, yeah, it's good. It's good. I say, mommy, it's not good. The trailer is pointed to this other truck your your trailer is turning it's not going straight back and then not only that i'm noticing your movement with the wheel you are turning too hard to one side turning too hard to the other side and you're backing up too fast and you're not allowing like i can tell by your hand movements that you're not doing the straight back so she was like ay 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 she got aggravated she got irritated so i was like um you know, cars started to come around to come to the fuel out and stuff. So she was like, I'll just turn back around and come back and set up. So I'm like, okay, you know, that's fine. Um, I was like, you might want to speed up because somebody's probably going to come back and take that spot because it's an easy back. And it's closer to, you know, the truck stop, the front doors and stuff. So, of course, the truck is going to come and take the, the closest and the easiest back. So she said, okay. She turned around. We tried to attempt again. 
So I'm noticing that she cannot scrape back. So I told her, pop the brakes, let me get in, and I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you what I mean and tell you what I'm doing and how to scrape back. So we pop the brakes, switched, we switched seats. I rolled both the windows down. I told her to look in her window. I mean in her mirror, the side mirror, and I looked in my mirror. So I'm showing mommy how to scrape back. I'm telling her first off, you want to go slow. You always want to go slow when you're doing your backing maneuvers because you always have that time to fix it. If I notice that I'm turning too much to the right and my trailer is going to the left, if it starts turning out of line where I needed to go, I'm able to stop and start turning, you know, my, my turning my steering wheel the other way so that my trailer can start pivoting towards the other way. Why is you backing so fast and then you're backing fast and you're losing control of the trailer because it's moving out of the direction faster than you can fix it? So I get in the steering wheel. I, I mean, I get in the seat and I'm in the mirror. I'm telling her, Mommy, okay, do you see my hands? I got my hands at the top of the steering wheel, which is at the 12 o'clock mark. So I told Mommy, listen, watch the, watch the mirrors, watch what the trailers do, watch my hand movement. So I started going straight back. I'm showing mommy the trailer's going straight back. You see my hand is at 12 o'clock. My hand has not moved yet because the trailer's going straight back. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to move my trailer over to the right. So me moving my trailer over to the right, you're going to see my hand turn a little bit to the left. But it's turning very, very lightly. I'm not going all the way over to the, I think that's 6, 7 to 8 o'clock. Is that eight this way? It's 12, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. Yeah, the 9 o'clock. I told her I'm not going to the 9 o'clock. You see me staying right between 11 and a little bit more to 12, but I'm not moving that much. I said, you see that I'm moving? You see my tandems? They're moving over just a little bit to where I needed to go. If I see that they're moving over too much, I push my hand on over back to the 12 a little bit over to the one o'clock you see you see my hand movement you know i'm talking about you see my hand movement now you see the tandems the trailer is going back to my left side you see and i'm showing her you know what i'm doing as i'm back as i'm straight backing and she said oh oh that's when she said oh the tandems now i understand the tandems the tandems now okay all this time the tandems so i said mommy you didn't know what the tandems is? She said, no, I didn't know. She said, every time you ask me, what are the tandems? What are the tandems? And I said to myself, what does she mean, the tandems? So at that moment, at that moment, I was just like, wow. Like, why is she not, you know, letting me know that she don't understand? Like, how can I teach you something if you telling me you understand and you really don't? So it kind of put a red flag up in my head like, okay, now I'm nervous because I'm asking you things. I'm telling you stuff and you saying, yes, yes. Just like I'm telling you, mommy, do you see the trailer going this way? you like, yes. And I'm telling you, mommy, it's going towards the other trailer. Like, it, you about to hit the other trailer and I'm telling you to stop. So, um, like I said, that was like a red flag. So, all in all, she was on my truck for, I want to say two weeks not really two weeks because i picked her up september 1st september 1st was a thursday so we delivered our first load that friday um and then the weekend i ended up coming home it was labor day weekend that monday we didn't um work so we worked we came back out tuesday um so tuesday wednesday thursday friday that was cause like a whole week of us on the truck together. So we on the truck this week or whatever. And, you know, I'm telling her, you know, turn left, turn right, you know, how to turn the wheels or whatever while she's doing her back maneuvers. So I noticed like if I tell her turn hard, you know, if I turn her left or right, she's going to stay on that left or stay on that right. She doesn't know to get back underneath the tractor. So in my head, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what is it that she's doing wrong why is her back in like why does she keep getting this trailer so close to the next trailer and keep trying to push it in so um this time i tell her i i, I sat in the truck because yeah, this time again she was like she don't want me getting out the truck so i'm like well mommy i need to get out because i need to see 
what it is that you're doing because once your trailer leave out of my view I can't see on my side where your trailer at what you're doing and I need you to stop before you hit these people's stuff so she was like okay okay so she you know backed a few times kept back and kept back and couldn't get it every time she got frustrated she was like ay 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 you know she got mad and so you do it you do it I, 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 this is too much because there's no space there's no space for me to buy it, this is too small they don't teach us this in school so I'm like, okay, mommy, I see she getting frustrated. Each time she asked me to back, I went ahead, I did it, and I showed her what is it that I'm doing, how I'm setting up. Mommy, you see, I'm getting close to the trailer when I pull up to set up. You want to be as close to these trailers or these tractor or the loading dock to your dock that they gave you as close as you can. You want to stop. You're going to turn right. But when you turn right, you cannot turn all the way out like how they tell you, you know, to make sure your note, you know, over your shoulder with the turn and go out straight. You cannot do that. We don't have that much space. So, mommy, when you go out, go just a little bit and then you have to start moving that straight. But you want to go in up enough to, you know, your, guide your trailer into the hole. <laughs> Once you get your setup, stop. Get out and look. You want to see where you stopped your trailer at. Do I need to pull up some more? Am I okay? You want to check the other side. Do I got swing room on that side so that you know once you start to do your back and maneuver, I already know what it is that I need to do. I need to know, okay, if, I need, if I'm turning hard right to pivot it into the hole and then back it in. I need to know if I'm perfectly set up and all I got to do is go slowly and back my truck inside the hole. You want to, you know, you want to assess the, you know, assess your, what, what it is that you're trying to do. So, um, like I said, every time things got frustrated, mommy give up and tell me to do it. So this particular day while we was back in, you know, she had got into it with another driver because the driver was saying, oh, she's taking long. We don't have time for this. He was like, you need to get in the truck and back because we don't have time for that. So I was like, well, at the end of the day, she's new and she's training. You was new too. It's either you wait or you help her. That's all you could do. So that's when, you know, that conversation came up on the clip that I showed you guys. We never really had no arguments, honestly and truly. We never had any arguments. We did have disagreements on me just telling her, like, hey, you cannot get mad or frustrated when you can't back it in in 10 or 15 minutes. Back and come with time. And if anybody has an attitude, baby, all you could do is back up a little bit, let them go, or they can either get mad and wait, or they're going to come help you. That's all anybody at a shipper can do. Because you're going to be out there by yourself. You you know, you, 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 and you're not going to have no help. You're not going to have a spotter. You're not going to have somebody that's telling you, okay, turn hard right, turn left, go up straight, pull up, get back under the tractor. Nobody's going to be, you know, assisting you. And the whole time I keep telling mommy, it's a concept. You have to understand the concept. You have to know that once my trailer gets a certain way and my tractor is starting to go into a jackknife position, you have to know when to get back underneath the trailer. And it's certain things that I felt like, there's no way she understood this in, you know, in, in, in CDL school. So, you know, I asked her, I was like, do they talk to you guys in Spanish in CDL school? And she was like, um, no, they don't talk to us in Spanish. It's three guys that speak Spanish, but they are not allowed to talk to us in Spanish on the pad. So I'm like, okay, because I'm trying to figure out how you passed. And then you coming out on the field and the scrape back and you can't even do a simple scrape back. That had me worried. So I'm like, okay, you know, I don't want no argument or that. I'm just trying to figure out um, what kind of training she got. So, you know, I'm asking her how long was the training and stuff like that. And she said it was six weeks. Um, and she said that sometimes that they were they didn't get a drive so they would be at school but it was so many people in the class that not every day they got a chance to practice their maneuvers. So Yes, they're in the you know, course for six weeks, but they probably only back three or four times. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, it kind of makes sense. Then she's telling me how there's different instructors there, and each instructor has their own way of teaching. But every day they're switching instructors. So this instructor might teach her one way how to do it this way, and then she'll come back tomorrow with another instructor. And this instructor telling her that the way she was taught yesterday was wrong, and now he's teaching her another way. So it was a lot of confusion. So I'm like, okay, I get that. So she started asking, which she was asking every time she was on my truck. She was like, she kept counting down her 21 days, which didn't bother me. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But 
we need to get your back in. You, you understand how to use the tablet. You have no problems with driving. You're turning it, you know, not too bad. Yeah, you're turning out a little bit too wide sometimes, but I'd rather you swing out and turn out a little bit too wide than to cut yourself short. So, you know, over time, as you're driving, as you're driving on the road, you'll, you know, you'll get better with that. So, you know, I'm watching her driving stuff. Like I said, driving was not the issue. The only issue we had was backing. So, mind you, we're only one weekend. At this time, it was it was like that following week that following Tuesday that's when things went crazy so my job she only been on my truck one week we're on Tuesday now this is going on week two on Monday she had already told me that you know she um that the handbook for the company told her that drivers are supposed to drive that we're supposed to have the trainee drive one whole week and we're supposed to observe them and then the second week we're supposed to switch you know every other day so i'm like that's not how that goes so she's telling me oh i'm driving that she's driving monday wednesday and friday and i'm driving tuesdays and thursdays so i'm like ma'am that's not how that go and now you're trying to tell me how to run my truck when you need to be trying to drive every day because you cannot back so that's when we got into it and she started telling me, which I answered the clip and stuff, about how she's not driving. She don't have no problem with driving. She was making the scene like, oh, she's not finna keep running to make me money. That's everybody just struggle because it's not just me because I can see it every day and I can see it here too. So it's the fact that area. Uh, but I don't know. You have to talk to them because supposedly... I have to sign you off. So even if it's 21 days and I feel like you cannot back, either you stay longer or you can go with somebody else. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Because or if you want to go home, then... It's whatever I, I want. It's yeah. Whatever I want. Because if... I mean, because I, I know how, how... What can I say to them? Say, yes, I'm on training. I'm on backing. I'm confused on backing because maybe I don't understand. She said correct, but I don't understand her. When other people come to tell me I do and on time everything, that's what I want to say. Really, that I say. I don't yeah, when they tell out. you in Spanish that you understand it, but in English, when I say it, you don't understand it. I do whatever I know already know. So I'm supposed to say exactly first. because I'm no you, you okay. I'm gonna this is. Then, because I'm not teaching you all over like you're from school. If you couple you I, should know how to I, couple. What, that's what that's what I don't want to mention in school. Because the people think that I compare the school with the field. It's not the same. I know that. I know that. The only what I say, they already know we are new. We are just get out of the school for six weeks. They already know. So how they but in school, do they teach how to get out and look? Okay, go of course, of course, of course. Get out and look, get out and look. But when you have it, when people tell you go right, left, go left, go right, go left, and you gonna you you going to you going to get out and look? No, because they already do it for you. It, that's why you have to get out and look on your own. That's why I don't tell you anything for you to get out and look. And, and I know it. When how, asked how, many me, time, how many times I'm going to get out and look um, on Monday? How many times I'm going to get out and look every day? So now, now, I have a problem with my backing. So I know you're going to write that, 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 that can I do backing, that can I do back backing. It's okay. It's okay. When they ask me, yes, I put in the bus. When I could do pull up, I can I can get it. That's it. That's it. Like an other trucker. What does everybody say? This is it's not something that you're gonna let today for today. I left, I know where I put the truck, where I turn the the the, the, the wheel, I put it in the box, and then after that I have a problem with the spade. I have a problem with I don't know what other thing, so but for me sometimes I got a correct direction and sometimes it's late when when I undo the mess and start fixing and then I can fix it. I have to do the setup again because the people are coming whatever they is for whatever. So that's what I say. I do it no fight day. 
I do a six day full 100% dragon. So, is it hot? Is it hot the time? Why they don't tell me? Why don't tell me? Why they, they don't change the paper? I got the paper here. This, and I'm gonna take a picture and say, look at what the paper say. So, I do it what the paper say. I'm not arguing with you. I'm arguing with them. With them. You say one, one thing right now and then other things. Yeah, I do it that. That's it. I accept it. I'm that. I'm that. And I have to work with that. Maybe you learn better in the street. Tell them that, that I can do the backing? No, I'm gonna tell them. A what? Whatever I need to tell them. And I come in with my mind, with all the stuff the school putting in my mind. So when I come in the field and then they change everything, what do you think? For six weeks you have this, this, and the whole day they put you in this and this and this and this. And then when you coming out, other one in just one day or two they put in another thing. I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy. Coming to the field, it's nothing. It's nothing for me. Just, just, just do it. I just do it. But now they have to understand that we're coming with other setup, and we don't. And we have some. There are some space that is don't have a space in the front. Maybe look, what is argue for you is not argue for me. 
that. I just have to defend my part. I have to defend my part. Because who do a sacrifice? It's me. I do my sacrifice. A lot of sacrifice. If you feel like you don't understand, I would tell them why. She says she don't understand the way I'm saying certain things. You've told me this. You know. I asked you, did you understand you know the tandems when I first started you teaching know you? You, know you kept when, saying yes, when, yes, yes. When, when. So in her mind, she feel like, oh, she's running all these miles and she's not getting paid for it. She was like, her problem is not driving for it. Her problem is backing. So why does she have to drive every day? So I'm like, so you feel like I'm finna drive. And then when we get to the shippers, you finna back? That's not how that go. So I'm like, well, you know, I did argue with her. Not now time did I ever raise my voice at her or curse at her or disrespect her. At the end of the day, like I told y'all, this lady is 50-something years old. My grandma's still living. My mother is still living. I respect each and every one of them. Whether we have differences or not, I still respect them. So I'm going to respect her, you know, just the same because she's somebody's mother. She's somebody grandmother. And, you know, I, I just, I, I, it really was no reason for me ever to really disrespect her. So, we never really had no arguments until this day. All I told mommy was, which I answered the clip because I recorded it, and I recorded it not for content. You know, I was recording for myself to cover my behind because I don't know what she was going to call in and tell them. But I just wanted to have the proof of her admitting, you know, that, she don't understand what I'm saying. She don't comprehend. Or her saying that she's not driving. She her she have her issue with backing. All she needs to do is backing. So that's the reason why stuff was being recorded. Just to protect myself. So as we got into the argument. She's saying how you know, she is not um, driving for me. And this and this and that. And all I said as you guys go hear on the clip. Just as nice and politely. Well mommy. We can call tomorrow to find out so that we both have an understanding. I advise her that I am a new training trainer and you are my first student. I ended up telling her that um, because it was questions that she's asking and I'm like, I cannot answer them for you. She wants to know what happens when she get off on the truck and stuff like that. Or am I taking her when it's her 21 days and this and this and that. I'm like, I, we can call and verify, you know, with management and stuff like that. So, um, all I told her was tomorrow we'll call, I'll put them on speakerphone, therefore, therefore we both get an understanding of, um, what exactly it is that you're required to do. Because she was counting the weekends, and I'm telling mommy, I don't think the weekends count because we're not working. I pretty much go home on weekends, so if the truck is not moving, they're not going to count those days in your 21 days, because... We're not working. And she was like, yes, it's from the time that I'm on the truck. My 21 days start the time I'm on the truck. Okay, mommy, no problem. I'm not going to argue with you, but we're going to call tomorrow to verify so that we both have a clear understanding of what exactly it is that is required from both of us. That's all I said. Mommy went to going off, how much she paid for school, how she don't understand. And I was like, that's when the video you guys can hear me saying, yes, you understand. When she was at the dock about two or three times delivering, guys that were on the account that I know, they came over to help her. But they did ask. They was like, hey, you know, is it okay if I assist? I'm like, yeah, because for some reason she's not understanding. So, you know, they asked me, do she speak Spanish? Like, what's the issue? I'm like, yeah, she speaks Spanish. They started instructing her in Spanish, and she understand. And me being her trainer, I asked her. I said, well, what is it that he told you? And I had him stand there, too. I said, what is it that he told you that made you understand? Because, yes, you learning, but I'm also learning, too. I'm learning how to teach because I want to know that if I tell you, get back under. If I tell you, you overturn it. I want to know if I'm telling you, turn hard right, turn left, that you understand it. And if I know that you get it, okay, I know I can teach it like that because now the next person to get it because that's how you got it. Which, everybody gets things differently. Some people can see some one time and do it. Some people are easier learners with actually, you know, doing it hands on. But at least I know if I'm teaching you the right way, that I'm doing the right thing. So I want us to know, you know, like, what is it that he's telling you? Because if he's telling you something different, I want to know what is it that he's telling you to help you get it in. So therefore, I know what to say or I know what to help you with. So she said, oh, no, he told me the same thing. He just said things in, in Spanish that I understand better. So I'm like, oh, okay, things like what? She said, he tell me on time. 
I say on time. She said, yes, he tell me that I need to turn on time. So I'm like, oh, okay, because I'm not saying on time because I'm telling you, mommy, you're turning too fast or you overturn it or mommy, you have to turn a little harder because I didn't say on time. She don't, she don't understand. So I'm like, okay, so I didn't say on time. No problem. That's, that's the issue that we have. It. You don't understand because they both mean the same thing. If I'm saying you turn it too hard or you turn it too fast or you not, you turn it, you, you need to start turning. It all means not on time. So I was just like, okay, whatever. I asked him because me and him are pretty cool. I see him all the time. He works for, you know, a different company, but he's always there in the shipping area. And he's like the yard dog there. So I asked him, I said, what is it that you told her? Because I wanted to hear what he told her. He was like, no, the same thing you told me or whatever. So um, he was saying... He told her, I'm going to give her my number, and he said, if y'all have any co any communication issues or something, just call me, and, you know, I can translate, and I can help. So I was like, okay, that's nice. I was like, you know, that was nice of him to volunteer to help because he's not a trainee. He don't even write for this company, but he was willing to help because he's cool with me, and everybody knows me at the shipping area or whatever. So I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, I left that alone. I didn't let that bother me because... At that, at that point, I felt good because I'm like, okay, I'm teaching right. At least I know I'm teaching her the right thing. It's just that she don't understand. Because at first I was like, dang, maybe I'm teaching her wrong. Uh, not teaching her wrong. I was like, dang, maybe I'm saying the wrong thing. Or like, I was, you know, beating myself up trying to figure out why is it she not understanding. And I know that I'm saying, you know, things the right way. And I'm demonstrating her to things the right way because three different times she's backed in the truck. She's even did a blind side. Um, that I had to help her get into and she got, you know, she got it. So it had me kind of like confusing and second guessing myself about me teaching. So like I said, we never had no issues or nothing like that. But the night when I told her that we cannot switch every other day and drive, you have to drive the whole time on the truck. And if it's like, okay, I see you get it. And I feel like, okay, you got it down packed today. I'm going to give you a break. I'm going to drive today. Or, you know, I feel like, you know, you don't need to be so hard up on because you get the concept you know how to back like you know what you're doing of course i'm gonna give you some slack of course you ain't gotta drive every day of course i'm gonna be like okay you drive four days i'm gonna drive the last day i'm gonna drive fridays like of course you know i'm gonna make things easier because it's no it's no reason for me to be hounding you about driving or something at the end of the day you driving this truck and you figuring that you driving to make me money it's not doing me no justice because it's worse sitting over there in that passenger seat and you just sitting here riding in silence and listening to the road because I'm trying to stay up. I'd rather be driving my own truck, listening to some music or something like that or listening to a podcast or something that's making my, day, my time pass because being on that passenger seat, it's hard to stay up. You can't play no music because of different, you know, different views on language or the type of music and you know they don't want no discrepancies and not only that you learn it so I can't play music while you driving and it's a distraction so for you to feel like you driving and you making me all, I mean, you making money for me you're not here to make money for me I'd rather be making my own money truthfully because this is this is definitely hard sitting over here watching you drive and listen to the road so that night y'all heard the conversation that's what happened that was that it was no you know it wasn't no no cursing no nothing it, that's what it was i was not even mad what i'm mad for there's no reason for me to be mad all we have to do is call tomorrow and figure out exactly what's required of you and what's required of me in my mind that's what i'm thinking i didn't think it was no problem i didn't think it was nothing the next day she got up before me she ended up um going inside wash her face brush her teeth and stuff you know do what she normally do when she get up in the morning so you know i got up packed my little stuff to go wash my face brush my teeth and you know clean my face and stuff to get ready to start our day the night before previously we had already planned you know so you know like i normally do i let them plan the load so you i'm showing you you know the tablet you see the delivery time you see the location you see how far we are you see the hours that we are, you know, on shutdown, how many hours we got to sleep, you know, what time we need to get up. So, you know, I'm, I'm asking you, all right, what time we need to be up? 
we got a fuel in the morning. She knows that we got a fuel. She knows that we need we are an hour and like 20 minutes away from um, pickup. So you know she's factoring all these things. So we both came into agreement that we need to be up at six o'clock. I think the load picked up at eight. No, it picked up at nine. So we agreed that we need to be up at six o'clock. So I'm like, okay, mind you, this was last. This was this night, the night before. After you know, you know her telling me about her not wanting to drive and stuff like that. She tell me that, you know, I let her plan the load. So she tell me we're gonna be up at six o'clock or whatever. We got time to fuel, wash our face, get ready. If she gotta go in there and make her coffee because every morning she has to have coffee, you got time to do that. Both set the alarms, get up. When I got up, she was already gone inside, you know, and started, you know, cleaning her face or whatever. So when I went inside the bathroom, I shut off the truck. So when I shut off the truck, I didn't want to lock her out because it was her key that was in ignition. So if I took the key, I would have had both both keys and I didn't want to lock the truck because I didn't want to lock her out. So I locked the truck and took both keys. I'm like, she got to be in, you know, in the truck stop. It's six something in the morning, five something in the morning. Like she has to be in the truck stop. So I go in the truck stop and um, I go in the women's restroom and she's not in the women's restroom at all. So I'm like, okay, you know, I walked around the love to see if she's in the store, maybe buying whatever she wants, you know, to start her day. I don't see her, so I'm like, what could she be? Because the Arby's, it was pretty dark over there. She had already, so when I look around, she's sitting in the curb in the court, just sitting in there drinking her coffee or whatever. So I said, good morning, and I gave her her key. I said, here's the key. I locked the truck. She took the key. It was nothing. I didn't think it was no issue or nothing. I'm like, okay. Mind you, I'm not paying attention to her body language or nothing. I'm like, hey, here go the key. Good morning. And I went to go wash my face to get ready. By this time, she done made it back to the truck. So she done made it back to the truck. And I'm coming back with my little bag with, you know, my face stuff to clean and little stuff to, you know, brush my teeth with and stuff. So as soon as I get in the truck, sis goes on duty. I didn't even notice sis went on duty because... I'm getting in the truck, you know, I'm putting my bags and stuff back up, you know, my little carry-out carry out bag that I take to wash my face and clean my face and brush my teeth and stuff with. You know, I'm putting this stuff back up in the truck and, you know, getting ready to put whatever I want in the front seat with me, you know, while we drive up there. It wasn't until sis got out the truck, popped the hood, and started to do the pre-trip. And I said, oh, sis done went on duty. Sis ain't tell me nothing. Mommy ain't say you know hey okay i'm about to start my clock or you know i'm about to we about to get ready to roll or i'm ready to you know i'm ready to start my clock she ain't say nothing to me she started her clock on her own popped the hood and started her pre-trip inspection i'm like okay mommy got an attitude that's when i knew mommy was mad but in my head what is you mad for i'm, I'm not understanding not only that several times i've asked you if you have an issue with anything even if it's about me, call the call the, the the people who they give the placement drivers. They have a number of somebody that you guys have a point of contact to call if anything is wrong. If you got any complaints on your train on your trainer or anything, I've told her several times, mommy. If you know if if you have any problems, it's okay to call them. Tell them however you feel. Like I'm not gonna feel no way because. It's to benefit you. If you in a truck with me and you don't understand uh, the way I'm teaching or something, let them know. Because you stand on the truck with me is not going to do you no justice because I'm not passing you until I know that you're able to go out here and do this job on your own. So you thinking you finna just sit here and let 21 days pass and I'm going to pass you, that's not finna happen. So, like I said, she started her clock on her own. So I'm like, dang, mommy got an attitude. I'm like, okay, she ain't say nothing to me. So now I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, now I see she mad. So now I'm irritated that you mad. Like, what are you mad for? How you beat me mad? So I said, okay, whatever. She started her pre-trip. When she got to the tires, our tire happened to be off the rim. So my job... Mommy done got up, started her clock without me. Started her pre-show sure without me, ain't tell me nothing. Now she see the tire is off the rim. She opens my passenger door, because I'm sitting there, and she say, we have a problem, the tire is, the tire is flat. So I ain't say nothing. 
I ain't say nothing because at this point, how you gonna start your clock without me, without my permission? Like, wh what are you doing? So, I ain't say nothing. I politely grabbed the tablet. I put in the breakdown order and everything. I ain't even say nothing to her. She get inside the truck after finishing the pre-trip. She say, what am I supposed to do? Do I do, do I take the picture when I do the pre-trip? I ignore her. Because you ain't got nothing to say to me. Because, ma'am, you started your clock. And you started and did everything without me. So what, what you talking to me for? Apparently you know what you're doing. So don't ask me about what to do. You started your pre-trip. You see it's a problem. Now I hope you know how to fix it. Because you, you did what you, you started without me. So at this point, don't ask me what you're supposed to do for a breakdown. Don't ask me how you're supposed to report this. Don't ask me if you're supposed to take a picture. If you see something wrong in your pre-trip. Don't ask me nothing. Because had you waited for me to start the clock and tell me, hey, I'm ready to do pre-trip, and I would have walked out there with you to watch you do your pre-trip, I could have said, okay, yeah, we have a problem. So now you go here. You go to this part on your tablet. You submit this form in. When this come up and you do the pre-trip, you put the trailer number. You put this. You take a picture. You let them know which side, you know, which side the flat is on, what part of the trailer or the tractor that has a flat, which tire. Is it the front? Is it the back? Is it the inside? Is the outside? I would, I would explain to you and told you what is the protocol when you encounter these type of issues. But you started your clock and started doing your own thing without me because you felt like you knew what you was doing. So, sis, do what you do. Don't say nothing to me. So, she ain't say nothing to me. She got an attitude. I, I, I can't take this. She started going off. At this point, I don't care because you started with an attitude. I ain't wake up with no attitude. At this point, I'm feeling like blast. Oh, no. Aga, you ain't nobody. You man. You man. <laughs> I I was never mad. There was no reason for me to be mad when the night before I told you we're gonna call tomorrow to find out. What is that to be mad for? You don't know? I don't know. I'm telling you that I think you're wrong. You telling me that you think I'm wrong. I'm telling you that I think you're wrong. We both pointing the finger at each other. So why not just find out what's the issue so that we both have an understanding? That's all I said. That's all. And you will hear me tell her this on this clip right here. So, after that, I ended up reporting. I sat there for a minute and I ended up reporting it. So she ends up um we had to go and we had to go take the track the um we had to go take the tractor into the um the you know loves have a, a service area for them to fix it. So she starts, and she starts going towards the fuel alley. So I'm like, Mommy, wrong way. She don't listen to that. I guess I'm trying to tell her that she's going the wrong way, which even if you mad or not, you should have listened. She don't listen. Mommy, wrong way. Wrong way, Mommy. She don't pull down and already went this way. Now, you can't back up. It's trucks behind you. You you know you 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 don't messed up the whole you you don't messed up the whole direction, and which I don't see how you do that because those trucks is facing this way. Why would you even go that way? You that mad that you going the wrong way? Like it didn't make no sense. So that's the issue that happened with her going the wrong way. And a few out, mommy don't listen. I, if I'm telling you wrong way, you don't listen. I'm supposed to snatch the wheel. No, mommy, go ahead, keep going. All I said was, that's how people end up on TikTok. That's how people make trucking groups. No, I'm not mad. I know how to drive. I know how to back. I, I was never mad. Like, I was never, it was no reason for me to be mad. What I'm mad for? I was never frustrated with mommy. Yes, I was like, oh my God, I did call smooth a few times. And I was like, Mommy don't understand. I was getting frustrated that she not understanding. Not because she's moving too slow or something like that. Because I understand. This is something new for you. You 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 know, it's gonna take time. You're not gonna just go back in 15, 10, 5 minutes. 
I understand that. So that was never my frustration. But you're not finna just keep giving up and feeling like, oh, no, you do it. Oh, you back. So I started, you know, explaining to her why she shouldn't just give up like that. Because at the end of the day, it's going to happen to you out there by yourself. Everybody is not going to sit here and wait for you to back. You're going to have them people that... That got a load to pick up that, that they running late on or they trying to be on time on and you holding them up. All I did was tell her scenarios of reasons of, you know, why people act like that and how to handle it. Let them go. Don't rush yourself. Don't get mad at yourself because that's how you go to messing up. Under pressure, you mad. Now you got, you you know, you don't forget what you're doing. You don't forget yourself. You don't forget if you're going left or right. You, you know, you... You so under pressure that you forgot everything. So like I tell her, there's no reason to be mad. There's no reason to rush because you're taking 15 minutes. Who cares? The load is not late. If it took you an hour, that's cool. That is perfectly fine. The load is not late. And gratefully, you're able to back because I've heard other trainers that don't even let their students back. They switch out once they get to their shipper, their delivery, to go pick up or deliver. They switch out and they do the backing so that they don't have to deal with that. I don't do that. At the end of the day, if you out here with training, you're out here because you're trying to learn. You're trying to perfect the concept. You should already know how to back from, from CDL school. You're just out here to, the, to apply the setup in different situations. And I'm here to help you, you know, set up properly. To show you how to approach you know, your, your parking and stuff like that. That's what I'm here for. So I shouldn't be here showing you the basics. I should be showing you how to apply, you know, different maneuvers and to apply your setup in different situations or smaller spaces and stuff like that. So, that day, we went on ahead. Mommy went the wrong way. We went. I, I Like I said, I, I told Mommy wrong way. You don't listen. You mad. You got an attitude. You do what you want to do. You start your clock without me. You, you do pre-trip without me. I At this point, I'm not arguing with nobody. I, I'm not doing that. So, we went on ahead, got the tire fix. At this time, while we getting the tire fix, she on the phone talking to placement driver coordinator for, for the students. I'm over here talking to my dispatch. I call, I tell them the issue, what's going on, what happened. She don't understand. It's a communication issue. That's what I feel the issue is. I tell them how she's more concerned about getting off the truck in 21 days. She's telling me that she get off next week, Wednesday. She only been on my truck for one week. How is you getting off the truck next week, Wednesday? And, you know, it was a whole issue about that. Um, I also told them, you know, how I've... I tried to avoid, you know, her being kicked off my truck by us calling in today. We were supposed to call in to find out exactly what is the protocol for her being on the truck. Are she is she allowed after one week to drive every other day? Do she need to drive the whole 21 days? How many days is she supposed to drive? And you know, stuff like that. That was what we were supposed to call today to do, but things went left. Like I told him, I was never mad. However, she's not listening, she's doing things on her own terms, and I cannot allow that. So she got to get off my truck. They said, Okay, we understand you are totally right. You know, it's nothing you can do about that. They said we have this load for you right now. Once you deliver this load, head to the terminal. At this point, I'm driving because now you ain't finna be mad and you ain't finna run me off no road or you ain't finna run into the back of nobody or do something stupid because you mad because you already done started your clock without me, went in the fuel out the wrong way, you yelling and screaming, you talking in Spanish and no, 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 we're not doing it. So I ended up driving. So once we in the, you know, once we get it back in the truck, whatever, they fix the tire, I'm going to go pick up the load. Evidently, the people that she spoke to told her that she was going back to the terminal right after I fixed the tire. My dispatch told me I am to go pick up the load and then head up to the terminal because the load was heading that way and they was not going to allow me to deadhead without, you know, being, you know, going up the deadhead that many miles without at least taking them a load halfway. So when she saw me start going the opposite direction, where are we going? They told me you take me to the terminal. She started going off. 
All right, y'all, my phone died. So I'm I'm, I'm going to finish this up on my phone because I'm, I'm about done with the video anyways. But um, I don't know, forgot what I was saying. Um, So, yeah, I ended up going and um, I went to go pick up my load. And like I told her, don't say nothing else to me. You know, I, I was done talking to her. It's nothing to talk about. Um, so like I told her, you know, call whoever it is that they told you guys your point of contact is to reach if you have a problem, call them and figure out whatever you need to figure out. But I'm going to go pick up my load and then I'll be taking you to the terminal. So yeah, I bought some more. <laughs> what do you think? You got your CDL, I got my CDL. Good for you. Okay. Yeah, good for me. Good for me, exactly. But it's so easy. I ask you, we go to the because I say, oh my oh, God. What? You hey, talking hey, to hey, me? Hey, you already hey, called Tim. No. This morning, did you talk to me? No. You started your shit. You didn't say nothing to me. I don't so, say nothing. I had to talk your thing. About the time. That's here. it. Exactly. Once exactly. you did a preach. Exactly. And, exactly. Just, and, and then why am I talking to you when you haven't even talked to me all day? So I, keep talking to whoever gave you think, the instructions. Do you, think, do you think that I'm going to talk to you after what happened in the night and what happened in the morning? Okay. Last night, morning. I'm, you, you're mad because yeah. I told you that you're not getting off the truck in 21 mad? days. What? You got an attitude. When I woke up this morning, I did not have an attitude. I woke up, I went to go in uh -huh. the morning to wash my face and do what I have to uh -huh. do to start my day. Uh -huh. I gave you the truck key yeah. and I went back inside. Yeah. When I came back to the truck, you was yeah. already in the driver's seat. Yeah. You started your clock exactly. and you started your pre trip exactly. You didn't ask me, hey, are we um, I'm about to start? You didn't tell me, I'm about to start now. We're about to go to Jupiter. You started your ship with a whole attitude. It's, you ain't no, saying no, nothing no, 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 to no, me. No. Um, she started calling her family or whoever she was talking to in Spanish. She's going off in Spanish. It's stupid. Da -da -da -da. So I was like, you know what? You're not going to be sitting in the truck speaking Spanish and I don't know what you're saying. Duh, of course you're talking about me. I politely turned on my music and turned the music up. And she was like, really? Really? Are you going to turn up the music? Yes, because you're not going to sit on the side of me speaking in Spanish. Like, no. And then talking about me at that. No, we're not going to do that. So she called them again and was like, um, is it okay? Is she supposed to be um playing music and this and that? And they must have told her, yes, it's fine. That's her truck, whatever, whatever. They never called me about anything. None of her complaints, they never called me about them. Um, she would complain that we are outside of a ship area to get loaded and or unloaded. And I didn't stop at a truck stop. And I guess they told her, she's at a shipping area she's at a safe haven that's where the delivery is and the next truck stop is an hour and 45 minutes away so she's okay to park there she was mad because she's not able to take a bath every night she was mad because we had to sit outside of a rest area so that means every morning i mean we had to sit outside of the shipper so that means every morning she cannot make a coffee or this this and that at the end of the day like i said i had no problems um being patient with mommy or nothing like that. It was never an issue, on, at least on my end. I never had a problem. It was no reason for me to be mad. Um, but I honestly don't think that she really understands what it is to be out here in trucking because you're not going to be able to take a bath every night. That's just impossible. Yes, we all want to take a bath every night. But in trucking, you can't. Sometimes things happen. It's times where I've planned to go and take a shower. And I couldn't. I don't got delayed at a shipper. I don't got delayed for a delivery. I cannot make the load on time. Or I, you know, it's things that happen that I cannot make it to go take a shower. I got to do the the next best thing, you know. So I, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Not everybody's gonna be able to take a bath every night. Not every night I'm gonna be able to park at a truck stop. Sometimes I'm gonna get there and ain't gonna be no parking. I can't park there. <laughs> what you want me to do? So. Like I said, I really don't think she understood um, the depth of being in the trucking industry because I'm not going to go back an hour and a half. Well, let me say an hour and 45 minutes because you got traffic in them in the semi truck. So an hour, 45, almost two hours just so we could sleep at a truck stop because I had the time to go there. But I'm not going to go back two hours and then got to get up and come up two hours to make this delivery when I'm already here and they are telling me that it's okay if I park here until five in the morning. She got mad and called and told them that and they must have told her like I said there's nothing we could do about it. She's at a safe haven. That is her delivery. They are allowing her to park on the property. We're not going to make her go back to a truck stop to park. Not happening. So 
I, <laughs> this experience was something that I, I didn't expect this. Let me, let me just say that I didn't expect my first student to be this bad. I knew everything wasn't going to be all gravy. I know I was going to encounter um, some trials going through this because I've heard horror, st horror stories from other people. Um, I spoke to Smooth about it also because Smooth also used to train. And like I said, no decision is made without him. I always ask him for his advice before I make any final decision. Um, when I thought about doing it, when they came to me about it several times, and I told him that, okay, you know, this is the time I'm going to go ahead and, you know, take the uh, challenge. And, you know, he, you know, he had my back. And it's crazy because now I tell him, and I'm like, you know what, I feel bad that I even accepted this challenge that I, I really feel like I should have never even got myself into it because I like to have fun. I'm an easygoing person. I don't do drama. I don't got time to be beefing with nobody. I don't got time to be out here on the road. And somebody like, oh yeah, that's the girl that trained me that was trying me. Or that's the girl that didn't pass me. And now I got, you know, pressure with people at the truck stop. Like, listen, I I, I am not wrapped too tight when it comes to physical things because after so much talking my hands gonna just go to swinging i can't control them so therefore i'm not about to argue with nobody or get out here creating enemies in the trucking industry that is not me i do not do drama you will never see me in no drama like when i see things even in the trucking industry i see stuff i do not comment on it i do not go on here i don't make videos about it i don't put my two cents in i keep my dollar you feel me I don't put my I don't I don't put my nose in other people's business. So therefore, I'm not going to be out here creating enemies or feeling like, oh my God, if I go to the truck stop, is somebody gonna swing on me? Or you know, just having that type of tension in my workspace. Period. Even in the truck, just being feet away from somebody because the world is crazy. How I know if that morning, like I said, you see, I felt I went to sleep with no problem. I wasn't mad. I woke, I woke up the next day ready to call the people, start the day and find out what it is that we needed to know. Sis, on the other, other hand, she was mad. Who's to say if she wasn't wrapped too tight and she stabbed me in my sleep or swing up? Like, no. I, it's not worth the pay that they give you. It's not worth it for the headache. It's not worth my life. It's not worth a lot of things. So to answer your question, I am not training anymore. I I just can't. I I really can't. I I know a lot of people are like, don't let one person stop it. You know, stop you from training other people. I this just not for me. For two, training. Nobody that is a trainer is a certified trainer because I've seen people in the comment section saying. Oh, this person, oh, she's not certified to be no trainer. Oh, you need to have five, six, seven, eight years of experience before you consider training. I agree. However, I ain't reached out to them. They reached out to me. Next, there's no certification to be no trainer at no school. I mean, at no job. All your company is going to look at your driving history, see that you have a good log you don't have no accidents you don't have no tickets you are making your deliveries on time they gonna look at your work history and see that okay this person is doing the job your dispatch is going to speak up for you yeah he's he's a good candidate for the position and they'll reach out to you and offer you this position so it's no such thing as driving four five six seven eight years of course it should be like that i, I agree you should definitely have some years under your belt consider you know considering being a trainer but if you guys did not know, you can be driving for six months and become a trainer. You can. After six months of being at the company, you can definitely become a trainer. You can. So your trainer might not even have the amount of years that I got. You might got a trainer that got one year. You might got a trainer that got six months. Who's to say? Because there's no certification to be no trainer. Like I said, all they do all they do is verify your driving history and that's it uh what else i wanted to say um dying furthermore i am not fit to be no trainer and it's not because i don't have the patience 
It's not because I don't want to deal with this. It's not because of any of that. The reason why I say I am not fit to be a trainer. And I'm saying this, you know, out of just being honest, because y'all know I'm a very honest person. I'm going to keep it a thousand. When I started, you know, this training thing and I, you know, got my mind together about being a trainer and stuff like that. I already knew I was going to have an issue with trying to teach because I've never had to teach people like how to to drive a truck at least. And I've never wanted no job where I have to be like a boss or a position where I'm bossy or I got to tell you what to do or I, it's up to me to hire a fire. I never wanted that type of position because like I said, I don't have time to be beefing with people and I don't want to be the cause of somebody not being able to put food on their family's table. So that's a position that I've never, I've never wanted. I'm not even a bossy person. Y'all know if I know something, I'm going to share. If my friends know if I, if it's a way that I can help y'all get some money and I know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, guess what? You going to know that somebody. That's just me. So I feel like for one, this being in this position, it kind of taking me out of my character because I'm, I'm not, I'm not the type that be, you know, all that catty, all that arguing and stuff like that, that no, nah, we ain't, we ain't, I don't even argue with my man. Me and Smooth, we, we do not argue. I can't even count a time where we've had an argument. We don't argue. For one, he's not even finna argue with me. We gonna hang up, even if I'm mad, I'm not finna argue with him. I'm, I'm gonna call you back. And that's that. We don't sit on the phone and argue. We don't do that. So I'm not finna get on the truck arguing with nobody else. But me actually, you know, dissecting this out, I run regional. For the most part, I'm in Florida. I'm in North Carolina, South Carolina. I hit Georgia sometimes. Every now and then, you'll see me up in Tennessee. I rarely touch mountains. I don't train. Most of the time, I'm on a flat surface. I don't really scale. I don't have to because my loads, all I got to do is slide my tandems all the way forward, and they're good all the time. I carry the same thing. I'm on a, you know, a regional account. Most of the time I'm carrying the same thing. I know exactly where my load's going. I know where I can stop at. I know where I can park. I know where I can shut down. I know where I can fuel at. I know the account. I've been doing it for almost a year now. Me doing this account and me having drivers, well, the driver that I just had, she's going OTR. You're not getting that mountain experience. It's about to be snow season. You never drove in snow in the 18-wheeler. You're not about to get that experience. I can't show you how to chain because I don't have chains on my truck. I don't chain. All I can do is tell you my experience out there. All I can do is, you know, see you some video clips of things on YouTube that I think can help you. But I'm not actually out here to, I'm not actually, you know, able to show you what it is driving in mountains. How it is to use your jake and things like that or you seeing an incline you knowing what a steep incline is and how you know how to go down a steep incline things like that how to you know how to have control over your truck i cannot show you some of these things because that's not my route so for them to send me drivers that's not doing the same that i'm same thing that i'm doing just because they need trainers it's kind of like you can't really fault the company because they can't discriminate and say we can't hire you because it's an equal opportunity. Everybody has to be, you know, given the same offer of, you know, um, training and stuff like that. So we can't say, okay, men need to be out there for 21 days with a trainer, but we can't do that for women because we don't have enough women trainers. They're just going to be stuck without trainers because I'm damn sure one less of a trainer that they got because I'm not doing it no more. I just can't. But like me knowing what it is to be out there on the road, knowing snow season coming, knowing that, you know, it's a lot of drivers that's about to be out here for the very first time in a semi truck, in this type of weather, in different states. You need to know, you know, your tandems in certain states, your tandems can't be back too far. And, you know, you need to know about, you know, running your clock properly, how to make money with your clock. It's a lot to learn. And I feel like if you're not, coming out here ready or at least do some homework so that you know what you're getting yourself into it makes it harder for your trainer like i said again i'm not training i made up my mind 
I am done with it. I, <laughs> I, you ain't finna catch me with nobody else on this passenger seat unless it's my grandma or my man. I'm done. We ain't doing that. So, word of advice I could give women is I would try to do some videos out here because I have definitely been getting more females on my channel. And I'm so sorry that I will not be able to get to experience the road life with some of y'all. Um, but when you do get on your trainer's truck, ask questions. Don't sit there and say you don't got no questions. Don't sit there and assume. Ask. They're there to tell you to help you. If they don't know, they should be finding out. Because if it's something that I don't know, I'm going to go on Google. I'm going to go on YouTube. I'm going to call management. I'm going to call somebody and find out for you. Because I'm being having a trainer is kind of like having their, your job is giving you your truck and mentor. So therefore, if you come out on the truck with me and I'm your trainer, whatever you need to know, you're supposed to be like a sponge soaking up all the knowledge that I got. If you got to write stuff down, if you got to record stuff I said, if you got to record stuff that I'm doing that help you, you are supposed to be building a relationship with your trainer. If you on the road and you got a problem, you should be able to call your trainer and say, hey, I'm stuck in such and such such and my pins won't pop. How do I pop my pins? Or can I FaceTime you and show you the predicament I'm in and you can help me? I'm supposed to be like your mentor out here. Well, at least your trainer is supposed to be like your mentor. Because you're only going to get to do this one time. Once you went through training and you started your trucking career, you're never going to get another trainer. Because now you're going to start getting experience on your own. And you will never have to go back through this unless you stop um, driving for a year or two. And then they'll send you out with a trainer for maybe two to three weeks. That's when advanced training, you know, start coming into play or whatever like that. And some companies still, you know, won't even do that. They'll say, well, you got your CDL, you drove it for three years, you stopped for a year or six months or something like that. They may not send you another trainer. However, you only get to get this experience one time. I try to, you know, give back and be that person that females or women can come to for help, for assistance, for guidance, because we don't have that in this community. Um, everybody is thinking they're better than the next person, or it's, you know, it's really not no no support when it comes to females in the trucking industry. Everybody is talking about what they're making and how they're making it in the industry. Nobody is really supporting new truckers that come in. So, you know, that was my way of trying to do it, but I can't do it. I'm sorry. I, I'm I, I'm sorry if I let anybody down or if anybody felt that I was going to be that girl for those girls, but I can't do it. It just, it comes with a lot. It's me putting my life in danger. It's, it's me putting up with a lot of, you know, attitude and disagreements. And like I said, it's just not the type of energy that I want around me. So I'm not training. I, I made up my final decision about it. I am not considering it. I, I just can't. So um, like, comment, subscribe, drop down in the comment section, any tips. Even if you don't agree with something that I did, you can leave it down there. I'm not gonna be mad. I'm going to read it as long as it's respectful. Um, so, yeah, uh, I wish all of my female drivers luck out here that's coming into the industry. Um, like I said, ask questions, soak up all the energy. I mean, all the information you can get from your trainer. Um, and that's that drive safe. We are coming into snow season. Trucking is definitely a dangerous job. So, Make sure you're paying attention. Make sure you are obeying all driving laws, DOT laws, um, the signs that are out there, traffic signals, the whole thing, y'all. Just be extremely careful out there, uh, even my males. But I'm mainly talking to my women because that was the reason why I was doing this. Um, so I'm wishing you guys love, peace, and blessings. I'm about to log out. It's getting dark. Y'all can barely see me, but I'm definitely about to end this video. 
Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for updates. And we'll see what happens in the near future. Bye. Thank you.